This is the AnchorMake M5C, a 3D printer that promises that you will make more with less effort. Now, if you are a seasoned 3D printer user, everybody who I've shown this to who has already done 3D printing asks the same question. They look it up and down and go, where's the screen? Yes, it has no interface on it. It is essentially a headless 3D printer. Now I say essentially, because oftentimes a headless machine requires you to be plugged into a computer, and this one doesn't. It'll run off an app on your computer, or it'll run off an app on your phone, but it will do so wirelessly. Now that does mean that you do need to have a phone that you can set up the app on to get it onto your wireless network. But once you're up and running on that wireless network, I can confirm that, you know, having this machine around, I have been making a lot with really not much effort. So I would say that it fulfills that promise. Now let's dive into the nitty and gritty of using this machine, starting with the unboxing. The unboxing went fine, but what surprised me is that it came with these incredibly big instruction pages. These instruction pages are just more massive than anything I've seen on any other 3D printer. I almost feel like they need to come with like origami instructions to teach you how to fold them up. You could make a, actually a pretty decent DM screen with these when you're done with them. They're just, it's huge. Now, one of the first things that I noticed about this design is that it's got this strange little antenna poking out the top. This is where the filament goes into, driving it through the reverse Bowden tube into your 3D printer. Yes, this is a direct drive 3D printer, so this Bowden tube is just for guidance reasons, and it just kind of sticks up there out of nowhere. Part of me thought, you know, what they should have done is taken this and put this below so that it was just a little more aesthetically pleasing. Now, granted, when you stick a roll of filament up there, it takes up just about the same amount of space anyways, whether it's above or below. However, you might notice that my filament is not going into that Bowden tube right now because I discovered that when it goes through the Bowden tube, unloading runs into a problem. When you unload the filament, oftentimes filament gets a kind of little bulbous head on the end of it, and that bulbous head could not go back through this Bowden tube. So every time I ended up having to remove the tube, snip it off so I could pull it off, or just get rid of the antenna. It's a direct drive 3D printer. It works fine without it. It's tempting to be critical at this point and say, ah, oh, they included something that we don't need, but it's easy enough to just ignore that, remove it, and move on, and the 3D printer becomes much more functional without it. So I suppose it's a good thing to have something that you don't necessarily need as opposed to needing something that it doesn't have. Now, while this doesn't have a screen on it for you to interface with it, it does have a big button on it that will ostensibly start prints. However, this button actually has three functions. You can press the button, you can double press the button, or you can press and hold it for three seconds. And each of those does something different based on what you've configured it to do in the software, and I guarantee you will never remember what any of them are. I have had to take a little sticky note and put it next to it with the functions that they do written on them so that I would remember. Oh, and it does different functions whether you're printing or whether you're not printing. So if you're in the middle of a print, uh, tapping the button will pause it, and then tapping it again will continue it, and holding it for five seconds 
will stop the print as of when you're out of a print, tapping it will print whatever you want from the USB that you've plugged in. The funny thing is though, I've never actually used the USB to print on this machine. So that single tap doesn't actually do anything for me. In fact, most of the functionality that it has doesn't do anything, but they don't allow for enough functionality in the software to really make that useful. I would love if loading and unloading could be programmed to that button, because if I could just double tap and unload and double tap and reload or hold and reload or whatever, that to me would be a more useful function, but it's not one that's available. And perhaps Anchor Make could add that in the future. Now let's talk about what it's like to 3D print from the app on this machine. You launch the app and you go to the option to start prints. And the first prints that it lists there, especially for this machine, are for an upgrade to put a screen on it. Well, that's good. But that screen doesn't exist, which is less good. And those are the uh, apparently curated prints that they recommend at the top for this 3D printer. Okay, if you scroll down far enough, you'll find some other 3D prints and they are perfectly good 3D prints for beginners, articulated animals, fun little toys, that sort of thing. However, if you go to the search function, it searches pretty much anywhere on the web that has 3D print files, printables, thingiverse, all over the place. And when you find a file on those sites, it downloads it to your phone just about automatically, prepares it for 3D printing, and you can 3D print it. In fact, that is how I 3D printed the Maltese Falcon that I used in a previous video for a visual gag. And this 3D printer with its big one button push was perfect for the gag in that video. However, their app doesn't really give you the ability to preview the print before it starts. So what if you need supports? Well, I wasn't sure, so I turned on supports and I'm glad that I did. While most of this print doesn't actually need them, the bottom of it didn't actually attach to the build plate very well. There wasn't much there. And I think that the supports that I had put around it provided some additional stability that allowed this to print well. Still, it would have been nice to have a print preview so that I could scrub down, see that the first layer wasn't flat on this print. Again, how would I have known that without, you know, looking at it in the slicer, which their app doesn't necessarily allow you to do. Now, if you start the print on the app on the computer, it's just like every other slicer, except that instead of saving the print to the thumb drive, which you can totally do, you can stream it directly to your 3D printer. However, even their computer app has some downsides. Well, for instance, this is the M5C. They do have an M5 3D printer, and that one has a screen on it. In fact, that one has a lot of features that are really good for almost twice the price. But since I have the M5C, which one do you think that the software defaults to when I want to start a print? If you're guessing the M5C, you're not catching which way the wind is blowing. For some reason, the M5 is the default. And no matter what I do on that software, it always defaults back to the M5. And, you know, it's not a big deal to just select the M5C every time, but it is an annoyance. And speaking of annoyances, their Anchor Make Studio on your computer takes over STLs as the default. It becomes the default application for STLs. Now, that might work if this is your only 3D printer, if this is your first 3D printer, but I don't want my STLs going to the Anchor Make Studio. In fact, I like them to go to 3D Builder because I'm creating STLs all the time but every time I launched their app, it took over STLs. Now, I did contact them and said, hey guys, where's the setting to turn this off? And they're like, oh yeah, we, we don't have one. And how do you fix this egregious violation of software etiquette? Well, you just have to edit an INI file. Is this INI file in the same directory as EXE? No, it's up three directories and down two more. I just, Windows, man. Ugh. But once I got that hammered out, sure, 
it didn't take over my STL files anymore and it was actually a breeze to use. In fact, most of the time that I've been using this printer, it's been through their app on the computer. And honestly, it's been really nice, uh, almost just pleasant to just be sitting at my computer and go, oh, I need a test print of this and fire it off to the AnchorMake MK5C. Of course, being a headless 3D printer, it does have other little problems. Loading and unloading the filament requires you to always either have your app in your phone or your computer running. And if your computer is not sitting right next to it, you're going to be running back and forth just to load and unload filament. Also, adjusting the Z level on the bed, there's no good way to do this from either the app or the computer. You just input a random number, try a test print, and then do it again and again until you get it right. And it's honestly just trial and error. Now, fortunately, that's something that once you figure out, you don't have to change unless you ever have to replace a nozzle. But, but for the most part, it's get it right one time and then just go with that setting for a while. So I shouldn't complain too much about it, but it is another thing that they could improve in the future. Now, one thing that I do want to say about this 3D printer that I am hopeful for is Anchor Make is working on a six color changer. And there aren't many 3D printers aside from Bamboo Labs that are doing multi-material or multi-color 3D printing through a single nozzle. Now, we've seen that that's a difficult thing to get right and even Bamboo could get it a little bit better. But if Anchor Make can get their six color changer working, I would absolutely love to see that added to this printer. And I think that that would take this 3D printer from where it is now, which is, yes, it works and you wouldn't be a fool for getting it, but I don't know if I could recommend it, to if you are an artist or have a need for multicolor printing, I would absolutely recommend that you look at this 3D printer. Well, look at that. The time's almost out for this video. I want to thank you very much for watching. And I want to remind you that you are a child of God. So you're special to me. So take care of yourself. And if you can, someone else too. I'll see you next time.